All right, guys. So this video is going to real quick run through just kind of some of the science behind phase changes as we think about fresh water. Okay, so um, when we're thinking about phase changes, we're talking about this idea of substances that change between solid, liquid, and gas. All right, that's going to be what we are focusing on. So um, if I take a pure substance, right, and um, we could think about, let's see if I could pull up, oh, I forget I'm on the webcam. Let's go back this way. And if I pull up the periodic table, let's see if we have, there we go, right? So um, we have all of these different elements are pure substances, right? And this website is cool because I can kind of change the temperature on these things and we can see them kind of fluctuate between solids and liquids and gases, right? And these are all at different temperatures, different elements or different pure substances are different phases at that temperature, right? So like when we think about phase change, it's really easy to think about um, like with pure water, right? So if I take a cup of pure water and I put it in the freezer, okay? And we leave it in the freezer overnight. When we come back and we open that freezer, that water has become a solid, right? It's just like if I have this desk, right? My desk is solid, it is hard. The atoms in there are still moving but they are very packed together tightly. We don't see them moving. We don't see them buzzing around, right? That solid chunk of ice just sits there, right? If I take that ice out of the fridge or out of the freezer and I put it on the counter, over time, you're going to notice it's gonna to start to melt, right? And that seems obvious to us, but what's actually happening is those atoms, right, are starting to loosen up. As the temperature changes, they're starting to be able to loosen up. Okay, so we went from a solid chunk of ice to a liquid water, right? So we have that water is now a liquid. Well, if I take that water <coughs> and I put it on the stove and I start to boil it, okay? Eventually those atoms in the water start to get more excited. They start to move and eventually that water is going to boil. And what's happened is that water has become a gas, okay? So we went from a solid to a liquid to a gas. And all that happened was we were adding thermal energy. So we've heard the word thermal before, right? Like um, the thermal hand warmers, or if somebody has thermals, like those, those uh, long johns, um, or like Under Armour type clothes are called thermals. Thermal energy, um, in this sense, we're gonna think of it as heat, right? So if I add thermal energy to something, the phase change is going to make those atoms become more excited. So the more thermal energy they have, the more excited they get, okay? Well, the exact opposite is true as well. If I have gas, right? If I have water as a gas, seems like we froze for a second. If I have water as a gas, right? And let's say we're able to capture it in a balloon, all right? And that's a lab we could do. We could put a balloon over a beaker of water um, if we were able to be doing labs in class allow that gas to boil into that balloon. And if we take that balloon off and we put it in the fridge, what's going to happen is that gas that filled that balloon up is going to slow down. So we're removing thermal energy from that gas. And now those gas molecules are gonna slow down and we're gonna have them become a liquid. All right, sorry, we're freezing again. So we have a liquid, okay? Now if I take that cup of water and I put it in the freezer, we're taking even more thermal energy out, those atoms are gonna slow down even more and become a solid, right? So adding thermal energy is going from solid to a liquid to a gas. Removing thermal energy goes from a gas to a liquid to a solid, all right? Now, if we think about what we were looking at on this periodic table, switch my view again, right? we could see that these things change at different temperatures, right? And that makes sense. If I have a cup of water and I have a cup of Coca-Cola, they might not necessarily freeze the same temperature, okay? Um, 
different things will boil at different temperatures, different things will melt at different temperatures. Okay, so one thing we can look at with that is, and this is an activity you can do at home if you have somebody that's going to be able to make sure you're safe, right, is we have the ability to boil salt water. Okay, so right here, what's happening is this guy is boiling salt water. Okay, so he's going to make some salt water and he's going to put it on the stove. Right? And this is something we could show us doing in class. Unfortunately, some of you guys I'm not going to see yet. So he's adding salt to this water. Okay, And then he's going to pour that water onto this heat source. And the heat source is going to be adding thermal energy. Okay, We know what happens when we boil fresh water. If we boil it long enough, there's going to be nothing left. But what we need to realize, just like when I showed us the periodic table and different atoms and elements will boil, melt, freeze, whatever at different temperatures, the same is true for water and salt. Water is H2O, salt is NaCl. They're two different compounds, right? So that means they're going to have different properties. So as we skip through this, we can see the water is all boiling away. And that salt is remaining at the bottom of that bowl, right? That salt has different properties than <coughs> the water does. So that salt is going to take a different temperature threshold or a different amount of thermal energy for it to be able to change phases, right? So the water boiled, the water became a gas and left this environment, and the salt remained at the bottom. Okay, so thinking about this, all the different elements on the periodic table have uh, different boiling points, different freezing points, but all of those things can go between those three phases, right? Like there are planets and moons way out and way out far in different solar systems, different galaxies where they have liquid oxygen, right? It takes a different um, set of temperatures, pressures, whatever, but oxygen here on Earth is naturally a gas, right? We breathe oxygen. But if you've ever seen an oxygen truck that's you know, going down the freeway, uh, maybe you have somebody at home, um, grandma, grandpa, whatever, that maybe uses uh, oxygen, like an oxygen tank, they'll transport oxygen as a liquid because you can have more oxygen as a liquid because those atoms are a little bit closer together than you have it as a gas. So they'll transport it as a liquid and then they'll allow it to heat up in those tanks a little bit so it actually goes back to the gas and then grandpa or grandma or whoever can use that oxygen, right? So solids are more condensed, right? Liquids, they're a little bit more flowing. They take the size of the container, right? Or they take the shape of that container. And then gases, they'll expand up to the whole volume of that container, right? So um, those three phases are what we're going to focus on. Adding thermal energy helps us go from solids to liquids to gases. Removing thermal energy goes from gases to solids to liquids. All right, use this information, use your worksheet, get it done. See ya.